All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, we will give it about 10 more seconds before we get the webinar going, but thank you for joining us. This is episode two of our four-part webinar series, and today we will be discussing affordability, financial aid, and ROI, return on investment. Okay. So uh, there are three people on the webinar today. Uh, our headmaster, Tim Vians, who I'll let introduce himself in a moment. My name is Peter Wickman. I'm the director of admission and financial aid. And then, of course, we have David Thomas uh, from the class of 2011, who's our assistant director of advancement and alumni relations. Um, so if you both would like to just give a brief introduction of yourselves. Thanks, Pete. My name is Tim Vians. I'm the headmaster at Grand River Academy. This is my fifth year here. I've always been in boarding schools. Uh, always worked in all boys boarding schools before here. I was at a boarding school in Connecticut. Uh, this is a topic that uh, I have an affinity for. Uh, I feel it's very important that uh, we all, uh, boarding schools and independent schools in general, uh, find ways to uh, increase the access to our education uh, for those who need our missions the most. Hey, my name is David Thomas. I'm a 2011 uh, graduate from Grand River Academy. I actually grew up here on campus. Both my parents are faculty members. So uh, when I was born, we lived in the dorm and have moved around campus quite a bit. Um, so I always have lived here in the, the GRA family. Uh, attended from my freshman year up until my senior year, graduated in 2011. Just graduated from college in 2015 from Washington Lee University in Virginia. Uh, I did politics and education policy studies and then um, have served this past uh, two years as our Assistant Director of Advancement and Alumni Relations. So I work with our alumni base, our community as well, um, and with a number of other constituencies. Great. And again, my name is Peter Wickman. I'm the Director of Admission and Financial Aid. So all of the financial aid applications that we receive will come through my office. Um, I've done a, a bit of um, you know, professional development and work on financial, uh, financial aid and accessibility. Uh, it's imperative to boarding schools and independent schools to strategically use um, financial aid to make sure that we can enroll um, great students. So we'll talk a little bit more throughout the webinar about the nuts and bolts of both how we at Grand River Academy use financial aid and also how other schools um, just in the independent school marketplace will. Um, so a quick overview and, and just as a, uh, you know, sort of a perspective here, I will sort of moderate this webinar. Uh, our headmaster Tim Vians will give some big picture uh, philosophical views of financial aid and talk about how independent schools run uh, with regard to tuition and financial aid. I'll speak a little bit more about the process, and then uh, David Thomas can speak directly to the return on investment, both as an alumnus that has benefited from a Grand River Academy boarding school education, and also um, as somebody who works very closely with our alumni base. Uh, he has a lot of good stories and can speak directly to um, those benefits. Um, so we will talk about cost, affordability, financial aid, um, but also what you're getting for that. And it's very easy for us to think about in the moment that independent schools are large upfront cost, but the return on investment over the course of a lifetime is um, it's pretty profound, and hopefully we'll pull the veil back from that over the course of this discussion. All right, well, thanks, Pete. Uh, so, so as the head of school, uh, I, I, one of my jobs is to make sure that we're executing our mission as it exists uh, on all fronts uh, for, for everybody at Grand River Academy and anybody who works at an independent school. It's my belief that they're there because of the mission that's there. So Grand River Academy, we have a very unique mission, uh, one that is important to uh, us and uh, the, the, the successes that our kids have. Uh, it is my overarching belief that we're, we're looking to make sure that any great student uh, who can benefit from our mission uh, has access to our education. So, you know, how does financial aid play in that? Uh, quite vitally. Uh, we're looking for uh, students 
uh, from all over the tax brackets who can benefit from what we do. Uh, we want to make sure that we're uh, allowing uh, access to Grand River Academy uh, for those who need it most. Uh, boarding schools uh, are, are, are quite expensive. Uh, their uh, total cost uh, can range anywhere from $65,000 a year as a true cost. Um, you know, a lot of that is subsidized by uh, annual giving, uh, fundraising, and other uh, resources at the school. Uh, for most boarding schools, uh, anywhere from 15 to 25 percent of their expense budget is allocated to financial aid, and, and that's where uh, our school's uh, belief in uh, access and affordability uh, plays into the equation. Uh, with increasing tuitions, uh, much like uh, in the university level, affordability is key. It, it's quite important uh, for us to uh, allow uh, families and students who need us the most uh, to be able to uh, afford uh, what we can provide. So what financial aid essentially is, is it's the school's commitment uh, to uh, help uh, defray uh, those costs uh, of the tuition and the associated expenses, depending on how a school may break, them down, break those down. Uh, to it. Uh, like Peter said, uh, all financial aid applications do uh, funnel through the admissions office, so through their desk, uh, and they eventually come down to our financial aid committee uh, where, where decisions are made. Uh, we're, we're quite data oriented. Uh, there are a couple mechanisms out there. One is the SSS, which is through the National Association of Independent Schools. The other is the FAST form and that's through ISM. They're both fairly similar, and what they do is the family will uh, input uh, different information, such as income, assets, uh, expenses. Uh, for example, if you have a child who is in the universities right now, uh, that would be something they ask for. And what that gives us is it gives us what uh, a family can afford uh, for our specific education here. And for us, that's a starting point. Uh, we use that to determine uh, a financial aid award. Um, and, and, you know, what schools want, what we want is we want what is fair for both sides. Uh, we want uh, great students who can benefit from our mission uh, to be able to access what we can do best. So as we move on uh, to the true cost of attending a boarding school and really what you get from that, um, we do have to look at what you're paying for, okay? So um, boarding schools, by and large, uh, prepare students incredibly well for university studies. Um, if you look at the comparison between public schools and private day schools, um, boarding school students are uh, out achieving their competition by leaps and bounds. Additionally, if you look even further down the line at um, higher education degrees, master's degrees, MBAs, doctorate degrees, um, boarding school students, because of the preparation they have early, um, oftentimes, uh, you know, by a significant margin, achieve more higher ed degrees. I'll turn it over to David Thomas just for a minute to, to give some anecdotes um, that he can share both about himself and some of our alumni. So if you, you know, after this presentation, for example, Google soft skills. Um, it's really all the rage right now. Uh, soft skills in the workplace, soft skills in education. And uh, in a boarding school environment, that's really what thrives um, with our students. So for example, um, sharing a dorm room. Uh, when you have a roommate, you learn how to uh, coexist with others when you share a bathroom. Um, when you're away from home, you know, that's, that can be a, a huge change, which oftentimes occurs actually in that first few months of college. Whereas here on campus, even if you're in eighth grade up until our postgrad program, you're learning those experiences, you're learning how to interact with others uh, in an environment that's caring and nurturing and has our, our teachers and our administration right there with you. Um, so just from that first initial you know, uh, benefit of a boarding school, uh, that's something I personally saw with my own college education uh, in the first few months and with our alumni as well. Uh, they'll come back. In fact, we had one um, young man from the class of 2016 come back yesterday 
Uh, he's at a, a college right now, just a little bit south of us. And he shared that, you know, the studying that he learned here, which is our study hall after dinner, for example, he still kind of carries through with the skills he learned um, in school. So his friends may be you know, having fun, for example, up until midnight, one o'clock, and then studying, whereas he knows after dinner, it's time to get his work done, and then he can have fun. So some of those little things that you, know, you don't quite think of or pick up on, um, but in our environment, you know, we've seen generations of students, and we know what works and, and what skills we can pass on uh, to our soon-to-be alumni. Yeah, and uh, all of this information uh, over the next few slides is pulled directly from the Association of Boarding Schools. So, of course, while Grand River Academy has an amazing boarding program and, uh, you know, we strive to enroll the best students possible, this is objective data uh, drawn from over 300 boarding schools across the country. Um, this is not just what our alumni have produced, but what boarding school alumni have produced um, over the years. So. You know, again, take in, I hope that you can all take in the big picture here, which is um, you're not just paying for the immediate, but you're also paying for the, the long-lasting effects of a boarding school education. Just some more numbers for you. Um, you know, boarding school graduates achieve a top management position by mid-career or by late career significantly more frequently than graduates of private day schools and also of public schools. And all of those things will lead to, uh, you know, exactly what the last part of our title suggests, a return on investment. Um, so to, to use some actual numbers in both the cost of educating your child at home and also what the return is in actual dollars, um, we'll, we'll use some more numbers, okay? So for a, a modest uh, standard of living in Rochester, New York, kind of an arbitrary location, but it is somewhere that's uh, relatively close to, to our campus, um, it's going to cost approximately $9,300, almost $9,400 per year for you to raise your child at home. Uh, you know, breaks down to about $783 per, per month. This will change depending on each individual's family and living search, uh, circumstances. But the point of, uh, you know, the point here is that raising your child at home is not free. And as you invest in a boarding school education, some of these items will disappear because the boarding school will be taking care of them. So housing expenses for your child, food expenses for your child. We happen to be an all boys school and um, adolescent boys between 14 and 18 uh, can really do a, do a number in the grocery store. Transportation expenses, getting students to and from extracurriculars, friends houses, vacations, all of that, and just miscellaneous expenses. So whether it's music lessons or um, a private baseball lesson, you know, all of that, that gets bundled into your, you know, tuition and expenses at a boarding school education. So while you may see a, a maybe shocking tuition number, realize also that you're spending money without necessarily realizing it on just having your child live at home with you. Okay, the long-term savings. Um, so, you know, again, this is all pulled from uh, the Association of Boarding School tabs. Um, children who are educated in boarding schools succeed financially significantly more than uh, high school graduates from public schools, high school graduate, or I'm sorry, non-high school graduates. And, um, you know, by achieving top management positions in mid or late career, uh, these students are able to provide for their families um, further down the road. You know, so this is an investment that you're going to make early, which will continue to pay dividends for years and years and years. Um, you know, and, and I'll turn it back over to David for just a minute because uh, his story is a very good one. And again, he works closely with our alumni base. Um, you know, but a big part of the boarding school 
process is what comes at the tail end of that, and that's the university placement. Uh, so David, do you want to speak about your college search, college application process? So one of the, the really neat things I think about our school, and this goes in with our size and our um, relationships that we have with our teachers and our administration, uh, all of our students um, are accepted into a uh, college or university. So um, they're either accepted into their first or second choice college with scholarships, typically. Uh, last year, for example, um, our graduating class was a little over 30, and they received over $500,000 collectively in scholarships for the universities that they chose. So not only are they able to attend the, the schools of their choice, um, but they receive scholarships along with that. And part of that is having a dedicated um, academic dean who knows them personally, knows them, their family, and what their um, interests are, either academically or in what type of school that they want. You know, we see college dropout rates, for example, right now at huge numbers. Um, and traditionally, that's because high school students don't know what they're getting into with the college that they think may be best. So because we know the students so well, we're able to really tailor that experience of finding a college, going out and searching, which allows them to, to do well in those first few months especially. Um, now, because you know, we're so small, for example, I often got asked in college, uh, I went to a, personally, I went to a very small university, uh, just over 1,800 students. Um, if that was why, because uh, of the transition from a small high school to a small college. But that's definitely not the case for all of our students. You know, I can think of two, for example, in the past several years who are currently pursuing their um, MDs who went to rather large um, state universities uh, in classes where, you know, our traditional class size here may be four or five, but their course it's four or five hundred. Um, and for their personality, they loved it and thrived at it. Um, of course, we're going to encourage them to, to do what um, you know, they learn in best. Uh, and I can think of others that went to smaller universities, same degree um, searches, but uh, also had a successful outcome as well. Um, so you know, every student is different, but because of our, our size and our focus, we're really able to, to draw attention um, to those students. You know, I, for example, am pursuing my MBA um, right now. It's non-traditional style, which kind of fits in with um, you know, my learning here, smaller classes as well. Um, I know of others who are receiving accounting degrees, for example, in, in more traditional larger universities. Um, so we have you know, alumni all over the, the country and world and, and love to, to spotlight them, for example, which you can see on our website as well. Um, it, it's really pretty neat uh, to see you know, where our guys go um, after school. My graduating class was um, just over 30. I had 33 in my class and we're quite literally spread out all over um, with different interests. But uh, the one thing that we really kind of, you know, I speak with them, I hold dear and remember uh, is the time that we spent here on campus with each other, um, which is carry over then into the college experience. Yeah, and through the college guidance process, uh, I'm going to toot David's horn a little bit. Um, our goal and, and our Director of College Counseling, uh, you know, the, the goal of that office is to open as many doors as possible and create opportunities for students to find that perfect fit. And what that perfect fit often uh, entails is both, you know, size of the university, programs the universities offer, location of the university, and cost of the university. Uh, you know, David was fortunate and worked very hard and through his education here at Grand River Academy was offered a full scholarship at the uh, university that he attended. Of course, that's just an anecdote, but that does happen and is a possibility for, uh, for your son. As, as has been mentioned, last year's graduating class, the class of 2016, brought in uh, or earned about a uh, half a million dollars in college scholarships and if my memory serves me correctly uh, they earned 143 college acceptances and that's coming from 33 students so again um, you know what you're paying for in the moment isn't just an eighth or a ninth grade education what you're what you're paying for is guidance through uh, and into the next phase of your life and also Preparation for that, um, because that is so essential. But aside from just the training that you will have and the, the numbers that reflect in your career and even at the university level, there are a number of immeasurables. Um, and I'll let our, our headmaster speak about that. 
Thanks, Pete. Thanks, David. So we started off talking about uh, affordability, uh, then into financial aid, and now we're talking about the return on investment. And David spoke uh, quite well about the university options as a return on investment uh, of a boarding school education. And uh, studies prove, and the Association of Boarding Schools has statistics that support this, students who graduate from a boarding school are much more likely to be successful in college and in life uh, than those who attend any other educational model. Uh, and besides uh, being successful, what contributes to that? Uh, it is in my opinion that uh, what contributes to that are a lot of the intangibles as well that students gain while attending boarding school. David spoke to having a roommate, uh, sharing a bathroom. Uh, all of these things correlate uh, quite well to what students experience in college. Our students are having those experiences now. It's almost like a pre-college program, what a boarding school is doing. Uh, David spoke about the soft skills, quite important. Our students in boarding schools, our students at Grand River Academy, we're learning the EQ skills. They're learning about empathy. They're learning about compassion. They're learning about diversity and tolerance and respect for not only themselves, but respects for other people. Um, they're learning about the people skills that go into a daily life not just in the classroom, but what happens out of the classroom. Conflict resolution. Uh, this is a great training ground, a great practice ground uh, for our students, uh, for students who attend boarding school, for what will happen uh, not just uh, beyond uh, high school, but uh, in a university, but what will happen uh, when they're in their workplace, uh, when they have a family. Uh, these are skills that are essential that they're learning now in our schools. Absolutely, and thank you so much, Tim. So now we're at the phase of our uh, webinar where we are gonna take some questions. Uh, you should be able to click on the question button at the top of your screen and just type away, questions will be anonymous. But I'll give a minute or two for questions to be asked and uh, as they pop up we'll, we'll take a few. Okay, so uh, first one that comes in is, is pretty direct and simple um, and it's just how, how, does, how can I apply for financial aid? This is going to be uh, pretty direct. It varies a little bit from school to school so if you are applying to Grand River Academy uh, I'll tell you exactly the steps. Uh, if you're applying to another school, um, certainly look on their website, but um, you can always call them too. Uh, on our website under the admissions tab, uh, there's another tab for affording GRA. That will link directly to both the SSS and the FAST by ISM websites. You can choose either of those. Um, when you log into those sites and set up an account for yourself, you'll input your financial situation. So uh, it will ask you specific questions about uh, what assets you have, what debt you have, uh, where you live, because cost of living does vary a little bit depending on where you're geographically located, uh, and then also what your household income is and how many other dependents are in your household. That program will use an algorithm uh, and and print to us a, a number. Um, you know, uh, from that number, we will look at our budget and, and try to make sure that um, we can support that family in their accessibility. So the simple answer is you go onto our website, um, follow the links, and apply. Um, another thing that I always encourage families to do is pick up the phone and call. I'm happy to have a discussion with anybody um, you know, about financial aid, about whether or not the school is affordable for them, and we can always use that as a starting point as well. Yeah, if I can jump on that, Pete, and, and thank you for that. Uh, we, we pride ourselves in providing a concierge service through the whole admissions process, uh, from initial outreach, uh, through enrollment, and even for our returning families uh, as circumstances may change. Uh, so, like Pete said, please do pick up the phone, give us a call, shoot us an email, because we, we know this is a, it, it can sometimes seem cumbersome and complicated at times. Uh, we want to make this process easy. And I, I would just like to add real quick as well, uh, as a student, we had no idea who received financial aid, of course, and who did not. Um, 
because of our, our uh, living together and, and being in, in good bonds with each other, um, that was never a concern, never something that you know, we thought of as students, um, never something that really crossed our minds. You know, we're all here, we're all together, we're all um, students, and, and oftentimes our alums when they talk with me will, will say brothers. That's, it's that strong of a bond usually when they're here. Um, even as a faculty member or staff member now, uh, we do not know either. So it's very um, much so a, a straightforward and um, you know, focused uh, process on the student and not on their financial aspect. Yeah, uh, and uh, you know, as a bigger level with our financial aid committee, all of that information is confidential and will not impact the student's um, life here on campus. We make sure of that. So another question that popped up is, um, do you offer um, merit or athletic scholarships? Um, and so the, the short answer of it is, yes, we do have merit scholarships. At Grand River Academy, we do not have athletic scholarships. Uh, merit scholarships are for students and community members, that's an important piece, that excel uh, at Grand River Academy. For us, again, we want the best students. We want great kids and great families. And especially uh, if through financial circumstances, Grand River Academy's tuition or the boarding school tuition um, is truly presenting a hardship, we will sometimes offer um, merit-based scholarships in order to increase accessibility. Um, you know, this is something that, uh, of course, we require an application for. I'm happy to walk anybody through the process, um, but in short, yes, there are some boarding schools uh, that might offer athletic scholarships. We, we do not, um, and truly, I, I don't know a lot that do anymore. That has been sort of phased out, but the best way to find out is to uh, send an email to the admissions office or pick up the phone and call. And with that actually being said, we have uh, three students just from the past two years who are currently at universities uh, with athletic scholarships. Um, so our students do participate athletically here on campus and get noticed from your universities of choice. And those were students who did not come to GRE specifically for athletics. They were able to develop their athletic talent while participating in our no-cut athletic program. Yeah, and the, the last question that I see, and, and we're pretty much on time, which is great. Uh, the last question I see is, uh, is anyone ineligible for financial aid? Uh, and the short answer there is no. Uh, we will walk through the process with anybody. If a family doesn't qualify on paper, we can certainly continue the discussion. As a school, we rely on tuition revenue, as our headmaster kicked off the presentation with, um, you know, and so we have certain expectations of family, but the underlying philosophy is that we want to make a Grand River Academy education accessible to, uh, you know, all families that are um, in need of it. And so is anybody uh, ineligible? Uh, simply put, no. Uh, we want to work with your family. Uh, we want to at least explore the possibilities for you. So please do reach out to us. Uh, last slide we've got for today uh, is just a reminder that we will have two more episodes in this webinar series in two weeks, on March 15th. We will talk about summer programs at Grand River Academy. That will be with our uh, Director of Summer Programs, Frank Shreve, and Assistant Director of Admission, Carrie Wetzel. And then in a month, uh, episode four, we'll uh, discuss meeting students' needs in a traditional boarding school. Um, that will be with Shannon Farrell, our director of uh, our foundation's learning program, and then Thomas Pollock, our school counselor. This presentation will be emailed to you uh, as a registrant within the next 24 to 48 hours. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. We'd love to continue this discussion. Uh, I have to thank, of course, our experts, David Thomas and Tim Byans, as well as Kelly Jones, our coordinator of uh, marketing and communications, because without her, this uh, you know, wouldn't be possible. And um, hope to see you in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you.